Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. In today's video, we're going to be making posted pat. I've split this video into two parts. So in part one, we're going to be making the post-its fly down to the floor as he's dancing. So they're going to be falling off him, flying down to the floor, looking like real post-its. And then in part two, we're going to see how we can go about adding the post-its all over his body and kind of making them flap around naturally as they are. So let's get started on this. Here we go. So first of all, we're going to create a post-it. So we're going to use a plane for this. Let's rename it to post-it. And now let's bring a figure into our scene so we can just get an idea of scale. So right now our post-it needs to be reduced in size because it's huge. So let's go eight by eight. And that is about post-it size. Let's turn on our lines, so NB in your keyboard, and now we can reduce the width and height segments down to two and two. Cool, let's create a new material and apply it to our post-it. Let's open that up and call it post-it. And let's get a nice post-it yellow for our post-it. Cool, okay. So now we can get rid of our figure, and now we have our post-it. So what we want to do is start emitting this post-it. So to do that, we're going to use an emitter. So go to simulate particles and there it is. Bring one in and let's just scale this down to about the size of our post-it. Now we can make the post the child of the emitter and that will tell the emitter to emit the post-it. So if I hit play, it's just going to show us these white lines because we haven't turned on show objects in the emitter yet. So let's do that now. Now we can see that our post-its are being emitted. Great. Let's turn down the birth rate to four in the editor and four in the renderer. And that is our emitter. Okay, so right now it's emitting the post-its, but our post-its aren't reacting to gravity. We want them to fall to the ground. So let's just bring our emitter up along the Y just a bit and let's create a floor something to catch our post-its when they do fall we can reduce the segments down to one and we can just scale this up we'll scale it up along the width something like that doesn't have to be perfectly the same as mine and now we'll create a new material call it floor oh I don't know what I just did there And let's just make that whitish and apply it to our floor. Let's also rename our plane to floor. Cool. So now we want to see what we're gonna do about our post-its. So we want them to fall down to the ground. So to do that, we need to add a simulation tag. Now we could use a rigid body tag that would make them fall to the ground, but we need to, what we want to do is use a soft body tag because that's going to make our post-its soft. So let's add that on. And now our post-its are going to be dynamic and they're also going to be soft. So let's see that in action. Okay, so right away our post-its are just falling through the floor because our floor doesn't know that it is a floor. So let's tell it it's a floor. Right click on your floor, go to simulation tags and add a collider body tag. Now our floor is kind of trying to be a floor, but it's failing miserably. So it is catching some of our post-its, but most of them are just falling through the floor. So to fix that, hit Control D in your keyboard to open up the project settings. Go into the Dynamics tab and the Export sub tab. Now this is what we're gonna be looking at, steps per frame. I'm just gonna right click and go to Show Help and have a read about this. This parameter is crucial for the precision of MoGraph dynamic simulations. The higher the value, the more precise the calculation will be. So let's bring that up, up to 15. Now you can see that our floor is doing a really good job at being a floor, and it's catching all of our post-its. So we need to tweak our soft body tag, because right now our post-its are falling to the floor, kind of like bricks and not like post-its at all. So let's go into our soft body tag, click on the force tab, and now we can start messing around with these aerodynamics options. Let's bring drag up to 100%, hit tab and go 100% on lift. 
Now we want to turn on two-sided so that these aerodynamics will affect both sides of our post-it. Now you can see they're falling a bit more like post-its. But we need to bring in some turbulence so that we're going to get some flipping and flying and post-it, more post-it-like behavior. So let's do that now. Go to simulate, go to particles, and let's grab a turbulence object. Now if we set the mode to aerodynamics wind, we're going to get much more realistic look at these post-its falling to the ground. I'm just going to extend my frame range there. And I might just bring the emitter up just a little bit so we can get more of a feel for the aerodynamics doing their thing. Cool. So now that we have our emitter set up, we want to bring in our character. So let's do that now. Go to File, Merge, and here he is here. So I've got this guy from Mixamo. You guys are probably well aware of Mixamo at this stage. If not, you need to check out a video that I made about Mixamo and characters and how we can use them in our scenes. Um, but this guy is what I picked for this scene because his movements are nice and slow and it just wasn't giving me any issues. Now you guys are welcome to use any Mixamo character you have or you can just download this guy from the description below. So I'm going to bring him in and click OK to that and then it's going to say do you want to do that and I'm going to say no. So in he comes and let's just swing around so we can get a better view of him. So he is dancing around the place and it looks like somebody's making it rain but with post-its all over him. So how do we attach this emitter to his arm? Well we can do that, but the first thing I'm going to do is actually I just want to show you something really quick before we move on. Now let's just group him into a null and we'll call him Posted Pat, of course. And now I'm just going to hide him away for a second. And I want to do a render preview and I want you to focus on the post-its. Now right now they look fine. They're looking really good at the moment. Um, but if we bring in a light to our scene, I'm just going to go into my top view, bring in a light, maybe bring it over this way, and let's get another light, bring it over here. So we have two lights now. I'm going to call this one key, and I'm going to call this one fill. Now our key light's going to have some shadows, so let's turn on shadows, area, shadows and our fill light is going to have no shadows and it's going to be less intense than our key light. Let's jump into the right view here and select both of our lights and let's just bring those up along the Y and maybe back a little bit along the Z. Back into perspective now, if I zoom in on these post-its and do a quick render preview now our shadows are telling us something that we wouldn't have known unless they were there and that is that our post-its are actually hovering ever so slightly above the ground or above the floor. So I can actually zoom in now and have a look at that. So yeah, you can see that they're hovering. So how do we fix that? Control D in your keyboard to go back to project settings, dynamics tab again and expert. And now what we can do is reduce this collision margin to 0.3, maybe 0.2 if you want to be extra close. I'm going to go 0.3 on mine. And let's just let those land. Now, if I go and zoom in here, you'll see that they're much closer to the floor than they were. They're still slightly hovering above it. You could try 0.2. But because we're going to, the camera is going to be so far away, you're not going to notice. You can do a render preview here. You can see that those shadows look like those post-its are on the floor. So I'm going to stick with that. So now we can bring back in our guy. And you can see that our frame range has been ex uh, increased here. So what we need to do is just drag out this bar to meet up with that. Um, our frame range increased automatically when we introduced our character and it's just compensating for the amount of frames in the animation. So now we're back to where we were a second ago. How do we go about attaching this emitter to our character's arms? So let's just rewind that and what we need to do is just find our character's arm in the joints hierarchy here. 
So here is right shoulder, right arm, and right forearm. So I'm going to be attaching this emitter to his right forearm. I'm going to do that now. So by attaching it, um, to attach it, I need to make it a child of it. And now if I hit play, you'll see that our emitter is actually following the right forearm around. Great. But we need to reposition this. And a quick way of repositioning it is, a quick way of aligning it, I should say, to the right forearm joint, is to use the re reset PSR command. So hit Shift C on your keyboard, type in PSR, and then we'll be able to just drag this up to our, our toolbar. So we'll be able to use it again if we need to um, while we're working on this guy. Hit Escape. And now let's just use that reset PSR that snaps into play. So it's aligning itself with its parent. Cool. I do want to just make a couple of tweaks here. I'm going to bring it into the center of the forearm and just bring it down beneath the forearm, just ever so slightly. Cool. So now we're going to find the left forearm. So it's going to be in left shoulder, left arm, and there it is. So we need another emitter, hold down control, select your emitter first, hold down control, click and drag. That's going to duplicate our emitter and we can add this duplicate, duplicate as a child of the left forearm. Now again, we can click on the object and use the reset PSR. That'll snap into position there and we can just kind of tweak it if we want to. So I'm just going to bring it slightly under the forearm as per the other one as well. Cool. Okay. So now we can watch this and have a, re have, a, have a bit of a rest for ourselves. And you can see that our guy is now dancing around the place and he has post-its being emitted from his arms. Now at the moment, the post-its actually stop emitting um, from the emitters. You can see that they stop at frame 150, which is fine for now. Uh, we're going to be fixing that later on. What we could do is actually just tweak our speed and rotation. So if we increase this to something like 180, we're going to get different rotated uh, rotations in our emitted post-its. So you can see now that they're coming out at different angles, which is great. Uh, it adds to the realism. And let's also increase the variation for speed as well up to about 50%. So that's already making a big difference. So I'm going to end it there for part one of this two-part tutorial, guys. In the next part, we're going to be looking at how we can cover Post-it Pat's body completely in Post-its. Once we have that done, what we're going to be doing is hiding his body. So all you're going to be able to see is Post-it Pat. So I hope you learned a lot in this one. Please hit that like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.